Have you ever heard the saying, knowing is half the battle? Well, in League, that's definitely true. Knowing the meta and picking what's good, as well as avoiding what's bad, is a super important part of the game. Plenty of games are won and lost in champ select alone. With over 160 champs in the game, it can be hard to keep up with the constantly shifting meta. But don't worry, I've got your back. Today, I'll be giving you our new updated tier list for patch 13.1b. This is a loose ranking of what picks are the strongest for carrying in solo queue right now. We'll also be highlighting the three most OP picks in each role. We'll go over what makes them so strong, and also what their hardest matchup is. That way, you know what to ban when you want to play it, or what to pick when you're against it. We'll be starting things out with our top lane tier list. The first OP pick we've got to talk about is Fiora. Despite plenty of nerfs to her core items and even Fiora herself, she's still an incredibly strong pick. With good enough know-how and reflexes, you can win just about any lane with her. On top of that, she scales insanely well. Her god tier dueling makes her the best side laner in the game, with her true damage passive allowing you to 100-0 even tanky foes with a quick all-in. Now, all that said, there's still one matchup you should try to avoid as Fiora. Darius can be a pretty tricky opponent. The only way to really out-trade him is to parry his E, but that's a lot easier said than done. Unless you have godly reaction speed, you'll basically need to mind game him or just get lucky. As with any Darius matchup, if he kills you once, your lane is probably done for. Rather than worry about all that, just ban him out and avoid this highly volatile lane. The next busted top laner we have is Jax. Like Fiora, he's a turbo-scaling duelist that can take over games in the side lane. Unlike a lot of other duelists that specifically need to go to a side lane, he can also teamfight pretty well since his ult bulks him up a ton. The ability to flex his playstyle and build paths makes him a pretty safe pick without too many hard counters. Except for Garen. That's gonna be your ban when you want to pick Jax. It's impossible to find good trades against Garen. You dodge his Q, but then he just spins on you and wrecks your health bar. Post 6, he has a ton of kill threat against you, and you basically have none on him. The final top laner for today is Gangplank. You have to take GP solo queue stats with a grain of salt. He is way better than his win rate shows. He has one of the highest mastery curves in the game. You can feel a huge difference when laning against a good GP compared to when you're against someone that's new on the bandwagon. So while you may not win a lot when you're first picking him up, trust me, he's worth the investment. He's a disgustingly strong laner with good poke and his barrels to zone your foe from ever going in on you. On top of being good early, he's just another really broken, hyperscaling top laner. Riot may be giving him some light nerfs this patch, but they're also buffing his two item core of Essence Reaver and Navori. So he'll continue to be really strong. As strong as he is, every champion has an Achilles heel, and GP's is Irelia. She's just too mobile for you to poke and zone in the early lane. She can just dash through the minions to close the gap, and once she's on you, it's over. Now, here's our jungler tier list. In this role, the first OP pick we have for you is Vi. She's just another one of the big Radiant Virtue abusers that have popped up. That, along with her ult making ganks and engaging fights foolproof, make her an incredibly consistent pick that can guarantee results. Does have a little bit of a slow start though. That's why you should always ban Elise when you plan on picking her. Elise can spam gank lanes and even invade you in your jungle, with little you can do to stop her. She can pretty easily close the game out before you really get the chance to ever come online if things get out of hand too quickly. But Elise isn't just a niche counterpick to Vi. She's straight up OP in any matchup. That's why she's our second pick for the jungle. Her early game pressure is insane, able to chain ganks across the map and make the game unplayable for enemy laners. One problem a lot of other high gank champs run into is what to do when laners are pushing. Going for dives early on can be really hard. One mistake, and you're enting a lane, not winning it. But with Elise, it's simple to pull off. Her repel allows you to drop turret aggro, so you can go in, burst down your target, and get out safely. Elise is OP enough that, honestly, no matchup is unplayable, but if you had to choose something you didn't want to go up against, it'd be Maokai. His early game pacing is pretty good, his saplings counter your bush cheese setup, and he spikes really hard on just one item, so go ahead and ban him to be safe. Speaking of, Maokai is our last OP jungler we'll be talking about. He's a strong contender for the most overtuned champion so far in Season 13. And not only is he strong, he's also easy to play. He has a really fast clear speed, and his easy to land CC makes ganks a breeze, especially once you have ult. All that CC also comes in handy later, where he becomes a super disruptive champ in teamfights. Another strong point for him is his objective control. 
Sapling spam in bushes around Dragon and Baron is a simple yet really hard to counter tactic that forces opponents to take a ton of damage if they want to contest those neutral objectives. Maokai is so broken that, like Elise, there's really no bad matchups for him. In fact, he has a positive win rate against every other jungler in the game. That said, the matchup that has the most potential to go wrong is Olaf. If he catches you out early, he can ghost and run you down, and once he gets going, it's really hard to stop him. In fights, he can just ignore your CC and dive your backline. Next up, we have our mid laners. The first OP pick we have here is Ryze. It's crazy to believe that after literal years of him being unviable, Ryze has finally been put in a spot where he's not just viable, but straight up a broken pick. The itemization of Rod of Ages into Seraphs is just too good on him. He gets good prio in lane, and has a great kit for making plays with the jungler. His point and click CC and decent damage can set up easily one skirmishes, or you can ult with your jungler to gank either one of your side lanes. When you plan on picking Ryze, definitely ban out Cass. If you're in range to trade with him, he's in range to trade with you, and he'll always come out on top. Post 6, he can just jump on you with Riftwalk, and later on in the side lane, it's completely impossible to hold up against him. The next mid laner we have is Syndra. She has a bit of a slow start, and a lot of Syndra players lose the game off of poor laning skills alone. The key is to play it safe and look to scale. Syndra is all about the mid to late game. This isn't really that hard, since you really just need to reach your mythic to start insta-clearing waves. Once you get past that bumpy early game, she has really good team fighting, with cooldowns low enough to give her pretty good sustained damage, while obviously doing ridiculous burst if you get in range to ult an enemy carry. One champ that can make it really hard to reach that point in the game is Irelia. A good one will make the game unplayable, both in lane phase and in side lanes later on, so 100% ban her out. The last mid laner we'll be looking at for today is Kassadin. He's already been a good champ for the better part of the last year, but with the huge Rod of Ages and Seraph's Embraces buffs we recently got, he's just a complete monster. When you lock Kassadin, you're putting the enemy team on a timer. They pretty much have to close the game out before you're 16. If they don't, you spike super hard and can easily solo carry most games. This alone can serve as a tilt factor for the enemy team. It'll force them into making overly aggressive plays as they try to shut you out, which can end up backfiring and just accelerate how quickly you reach that point. Plenty of AD opponents can be a bit dicey to deal with as cast since they're bypassing your Q's anti-magic shield, but the champ you must ban is Tristana. Other melee mid laners you can at least respect by sitting back, but Tristana's kill range is really high thanks to her jump. She can even just jump in at level 2 and 100 to 0 you. Not to mention, she's also going to be a lot stronger this patch with all the AD carry changes. Let's move things down to the bot lane now. Here, the top pick has to be Samira. She's already been tearing things up the past few months, and with ADCs getting a pretty big buff this patch overall, she might just be the best champ on Summoner's Rift across any role. She's maybe losing a little bit of lifesteal off BT, but that's a drop in the bucket. She already gets a lot from other sources. Being able to go Infinity Edge second more than makes up for it, since that's increasing her snowball potential by a lot. When picking Samira, you'll want to ban out Nautilus. Unlike other roles, bot lane is a permanent 2v2, so sometimes the ban you go for isn't necessarily your counterpart. In this case, Nautilus just makes it really hard for you to go loose and pop off in fights. His auto roots you so you can't use your E, and his ulti can quickly snuff out your own. What's worse is, you can't even use your W to outplay those abilities. The second OP pick for this role is Draven. Draven is a very Feast or Famine champion. It's a bit of a subjective statement, but I think this really brings his win rate down to be a bit lower than it should be, since so many Dravens tilt if they die before they get a cash in. If you can master the balancing act of being safe while also abusing his OP early game, and manage to consistently get cash ins without dying, you'll find he's a super OP AD carry for climbing the ladder. He ramps up fast, and with ER into IE being a viable build path now, you can snowball out of control and close out games super quick. As Draven, you definitely want to ban Samira. In early trades, she can eat your axes with her W, and you do not get them back whenever she blocks them. You're both super aggressive champions, really focused on going for all ends all the time, so whoever gets a lead first usually runs with it. The final bot lane pick for this list is Lucian. Lucian has some of the best early game laning of any ADC. Not only does he have good damage, but he can actually close the gap to apply that damage, making him really good at bullying weaker laners that try to sit back and just farm up. 
He pairs super well with engage supports, mages, and enchanters, so you don't need to worry about picking him only with certain lane partners either. He's going to be super strong with Navori now being able to be picked up second, and as with our other top tier AD carries, can pretty much solo close out a game when you have an early lead and hit that 2 item spike. When picking Lucian, you want to ban Draven. Lucian has to dash into trade, right? Well, if you dash into Draven, you're gonna feel the pain big time. Even with your full combo, Draven just out damages you with a couple of auto attacks. But the thing about Lucian is, if he's not super ahead going into the mid game, he's kind of a useless champ, so you don't have the option to just play safe against Draven either. Just avoid this unplayable matchup. We'll round things out with our support picks. Here, our OP pick for engaged champs is a Mumu. He has very strong laning, with good kill pressure early, and practically guaranteed kills post 6 with the chain CC of his QRQ combo. That same CC makes him a ridiculous champ in teamfights. When picking the mummy, you want to ban out Heimerdinger. He can keep you shoved in constantly and use Turrage to block your bandage toss. It'll be almost impossible to find a window to go in in this lane. And even if you do find a chance to engage, fighting in his turrets means he's probably going to trade back one or even two kills in every fight. If you like playing high pressure supports that win by shoving and poking, rather than looking to go for total all ins, then Heimerdinger is probably perfect for you. The counter to a push and poke playstyle is usually to look for engages, but Heimer has his own defense against that. Landing a grenade stuns your foe and causes your turrets to blast them with their lasers. Not only are you stopping their all-in attempt, but you're heavily punishing them for even trying to go in. Out of lane, he continues to dish out pretty good damage and utility in fights. A lot of people just default to using his ult to throw down a big turret, but don't underestimate his grenade. It's like a Sona ult that can cover an entire teamfight if used well. It's especially broken for fighting and choke points. If you're playing Jaime, you should look to ban out Karma. She can match your pushing power and blow up turrets with her Q, so she neutralizes you pretty heavily in lane. And if she goes Radiant Virtue, she generally provides more than you in 5v5 teamfights later on too. Lastly, our OP pick for enchanters is Nami. Unlike a lot of other enchanters, you don't have to wait to scale up to be useful with her. She's a pretty broken lane bully, with hard-hitting poke and sustain from her W. She can even be played as a kill lane support when paired with a hyper-aggressive AD carry that wants to go in all the time. She doesn't provide quite as much healing and shielding in fights later on as other enchanters, but she's still really strong in teamfights. Her E continues to be a useful tool, with the slow helping your teammates either chase down foes that are running away, or kite those that are coming at you, as needed. She also brings a lot of zone control thanks to the AoE CC from her Q and ulti. When playing Nami, you'll definitely want to ban out Pike. Nami's Q is pretty tough to land in general, and Pike takes advantage of that big time. He's super mobile, so it's impossible to hit him. You'll be helpless whenever he goes in on you with his E. In lanes where Pike doesn't have a lot of kill pressure, he'll instead look to roam, and that's something that Nami just doesn't do well against. Even in a 2v1 lane, she's not great at setting up dives, and if you try to follow his roams, he might just turn on you with his jungler and kill you instead, so just ban him out and avoid this matchup. And that wraps up things for our 13.1b tier list. Be sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you can stay up to date on what's going on in the meta. Until next time, good luck out there on the rift. Later.